What on earth is SpaceX doing? Starship Booster 14.1 undergoes testing by getting slapped? The vertical tank farm is finally gone, good riddance. Is SpaceX planning to build more Starship tower segments? Some shocking discoveries in asteroid samples. Did we find evidence of life? Is the International Space Station in danger? My name is Felix, welcome to What About It, let's dive right in. Starship Updates There has been a ton of interesting news this week from one of the most unique tests SpaceX has ever done to a shocking discovery about our early solar system. This week is packed with exciting news. Wanna find out just how exciting? Let's do this, follow me. Let's start at the Starbase build site, where SpaceX's teams are still hard at work replacing the old heat tiles and adding the ablative layer to Ship 30's stainless steel hull. So are they going to add this new ablative layer everywhere? No, check this out. It looks like there won't be any ablative material around the tip of the nose cone. But why is that? Isn't that very risky? Well, it's likely because of what's on the other side of the steel here, cryogenic liquid oxygen. In other words, this area basically has unintentional active cooling. Or at least partly, because it can be risky to have propellant which should be used to land, evaporate and get vented overboard. It'll be interesting to see if this will cause trouble, but SpaceX seems to be confident enough. Now let's move over to Sanchez to discuss the orbital launch and integration tower segments. Seven of nine existing tower sections are located here. They all see work simultaneously. Recently, the cryopipes, which serve the same purpose as the ones we mentioned earlier on the tower base, have been installed on the segments. While awesome to see, this is not what we're over here for. It is getting way more interesting. Recently, we have spotted these new pedestals placed at Sanchez. These are identical to the ones on which the tower pieces are situated right now. At first glance, these appear to be for the two missing tower segments that are in the process of being transported from Florida. But on second glance, you might notice that the tower segments coming in from Florida right now already have their own pedestals installed. This could mean one of two things. First, these could just be extra feet that will be scrapped soon and are unimportant. It is also possible that these four feet are for another segment that SpaceX has yet to build. This would align with what Musk had stated about the taller second tower. Nothing has been confirmed at the moment, but it would make sense as the tower might have to be taller to support the upgraded Block 3 variants. Do you think that this is for another tower section or two that will be added to the lineup for Tower 2 or will these just be scrapped? Leave a comment down below, I always love reading your thoughts. Now here comes the good news, it is finally gone, this is the end of an era. SpaceX certainly wasn't waiting for us to release this video, as they have already completely removed the vertical tank farm. Only two days after our last video, SpaceX removed the final GSE tank from the farm. It was lifted and sat down next to Highway 4 before crews began cutting away. As you can guess, this process will take little time and soon we'll see scrap pieces of the tank being hauled away. And we are also seeing some huge additions to the tank farm too. But before I tell you about that, here is a pro tip on improving your life. Did you know that if you subscribe to Why You Help Us and yourself as well? If you subscribe to space and science content, the YouTube algorithm will feed you more of it. Program your algorithm and subscribe stronger together. And while you're at it, give us a like and become a Y supporter for exclusive SpaceX updates. With it, you get access to daily Starbase photo galleries, including satellite, aerial and ground photos of SpaceX's progress and countless other extras on top. And no matter how much you decide to give, everyone gets the same supporter content and access. You decide what you want to give. In past episodes, we discussed SpaceX's possible replacement of this tank farm with newer bullet tanks in the same location. So far, however, they seem only to be installing tanks on the opposite side of the new farm. This was confirmed by the pedestals that were built next to the horizontal tanks. New large tanks will be placed here to expand the tank farm capacity and, in the future, help fuel Starship stacks on Pad 2. These new tanks are massive and require a temporary closure to be transported to the Sanchez site. We've already spotted this road closure posted for the 26th. Originally, we thought these closures were for the two tower sections that were located at the port of Brownsville. The document stated that the closure would be for the role of tower 
tower modules to Starbase exactly like past tower rolls. I guess SpaceX decided to throw a curveball at us as on the 26th and 27th all we saw was the rollout of these two giant bullet tanks. No tower sections but also no disappointment. Remember that these are necessary before we can see any launches from Pad B as we already know that there will only be one tank farm between the two towers. I suspect that SpaceX might have made this plan change because of the tropical storm that plagued the Gulf of Mexico. Due to this, the barges carrying the tower segments were delayed and they weren't even in Texas yet to be rolled out to Starbase. That means that SpaceX likely just took advantage of the closures it already had and rolled out the tanks instead. No new closures for this event have been posted on Cameron County's website, but they are coming, so we'll keep you informed. Next up, we have some exciting news on Tower 2's growth and some crazy testing of Booster 14.1. But first, I want to tell you about a new way to light up your day. You know how Elon Musk always says, The best part is no part. Let's talk about upgrading your home with Snap Power, as they are following this principle perfectly. Snap Power offers innovative outlet covers like Guide Light 2 Plus that light up your spaces in a very easy to install way. No wires, no batteries, no electricians, install it yourself in seconds. With their patented power extraction technology, they've transformed the standard outlet cover found in homes into a powerful array of products. Functionality includes bright LED light illumination, a manual brightness switch, and an automatic on-off sensor. With under $1 per year, I am able to enjoy my model in dim light, bright light, or off in the complete darkness of space. And I can do that for the next 25 plus years. Save outlet space, follow the best part is no part, and click the links in the description to get 10% off your Snap Power Guide Light. All illuminated, great, back to SpaceX's crazy fast expansion plans. This is it, the latest addition to the most important rocket development in the industry, Pad B at Starbase. This will be a new tower to launch and catch starships, and as you may know, it is basically a launch tower of the future. And this future is turning into reality in front of our eyes. SpaceX has been hard at work building this massive structure, and there are a few noteworthy developments. Most importantly, we know when the tower will finally be finished, but first let's go over some of the work that we've seen so far. We recently saw them begin pouring concrete down the legs of the tower. This helps cement the whole tower in place and stabilize it. Very important step. If it hasn't already, the whole process should be done soon and then all major foundation work will be finished. Other work that has been done is installing the floor to the draw works. Very important. This is where the equipment responsible for moving the chopsticks is housed and it is one of the tower's most essential components. Especially when you want to stack and catch the world's heaviest rocket. One last thing they completed was installing cryogenic pipes used for carrying propellants up the tower to the ship's quick disconnect. These must be installed on each segment before stacking and on this base structure. This will nearly conclude the work on the base and then they can finally stack the tower. Anticipation is building. Okay, now for the news that the FAA recently released. Spoiler, it is about stacking. The FAA controls everything now. We still don't know when Tower 2 will begin stacking, but we do know when it might finish. The agenda for SpaceX's new CC8801 crane was posted on the FAA's website, revealing a lot about the tower itself. For tower sections 1 through 6, SpaceX will use the current crane configuration, rising 460 feet off the ground. This will last until July 27th, when the crane will be lowered for an extension to 566 feet above the ground. Yep, it can get even taller. This extension will last until August 15th and will be used to assemble the final sections. However, the crane won't be done yet. They will then shrink it to an undecided height, just lower than now. It will then be used for, quote, smaller projects on site. That is assumed to be the end of the SpaceX crane and it will most likely be shipped away after that. If this is correct, we should expect Tower B stacking to be done by August 15th. If it weren't SpaceX, I'd be amused, but because it is, I'll just give a nod of approval. Now, it seems SpaceX has begun testing Booster 14.1, so let's take a look and see what's going... Uh, uh, what? Did they just seriously slap it? Mad Max! Nonviolent testing is officially out the window. Jokes aside, here is the reason for this bizarre view. 
SpaceX wanted to ensure that the chopsticks and boosters were sturdy enough to withstand a catch. And I guess they determined the best way to do that was to treat the booster like a dirty rug and give it a good smack, or in this case, six smacks. This is definitely not what we predicted SpaceX was going to do. But after collecting ourselves from the shock of seeing one of the strangest tests in spaceflight history, we were able to see just how valuable a test like this is. So what is it then? Why would SpaceX slap this poor <laughs> prototype? Well, it's obviously to train Mechazilla to fight Godzilla. Duh. No, no, I'm just joking. Well, partly. Using Booster 14.1 as a punching bag allows SpaceX to test and train the programming used to maneuver the gigantic Mechazilla arms. And this is important as these arms have a lot of inertia. It is important to find the right speed to bring them in, so the booster or arms aren't accidentally damaged on landing. Of course, SpaceX was also testing to see just how much the punching bag or Booster 14.1 could take. Having a strong booster allows for a wider safety margin as SpaceX doesn't need to worry as much about crushing the booster like a can. Knowing the limits will enable them to move the chopsticks as fast as possible. But that wasn't all. The tests got even more exciting and I can't wait for the real thing. SpaceX didn't just perform some slap tests. Love the name. They also performed full arm catch tests with the rails lifting and pushing up against the booster's pins. So instead of training Mechazilla to fight a giant fire breathing lizard, SpaceX is training it to fight a giant fire breathing broomstick. Not too bad. I don't know what Fish and Wildlife would say if SpaceX fought endangered lizards at Starbase. After all the testing SpaceX completed, Booster 14.1 appears unimpressed with only minor damage. The chopsticks are a similar story. The only noticeable damage is some missing material on the shock absorbers. After a quick inspection, Booster 14.1 was lifted off the launch mount and placed on a transport stand. On the 29th, the punching bag was rolled away to the rocket garden where it can hopefully get some rest. We've looked at Flight 5 hardware, which we're all on the edge of our seats for, but let's take a fresh breath of air and look at Flight 7 hardware. Of course, Ship 32 is still currently at the Rocket Garden, and as we've speculated in the past, it may face the same fate as Ship 33 and be scrapped. However, it does not appear that SpaceX plans to scrap Booster 14 anytime soon. The prototype continues to see work daily and is the most recent booster to be fully stacked. It is very possible that this prototype is ready for cryogenic testing to verify its structural integrity. I say this because we've seen a road closure for a booster transport to Massey's on the 1st. This could have been for Booster 14 as it begins its cryogenic testing campaign at the former shooting range. One thing is for sure, Massey's is not going to run out of work anytime soon. Moving on now to another SpaceX story, this one even involves the ISS. For decades, the International Space Station has symbolized hope and progress for humanity in space. This was especially true after the Apollo program was cancelled, the Cold War intensified and things weren't going well. But we are long past those days now. The ISS and equipment essential to keeping it operational are getting old and showing their age. Recently, just before a spacewalk, water began to leak from an EVA spacesuit that astronauts use for spacewalks. Clearly, this isn't good, and it is just another example of the ISS's long list of age-related problems. Something needs to be done. In short, NASA plans to replace it. But what are they doing with the old station? Unfortunately, it appears NASA plans on a fiery re-entry for this old trillion-dollar icon. It's a typical end for a space station life. The old Russian-built Mir saw the same fate. To make this entry safe, though, they need a deorbit vehicle, which NASA has now selected SpaceX to provide. Given that the plan is to deorbit the station by 2030, it wouldn't surprise us if a Starship provided that capability by then. Maybe, just maybe, SpaceX could even load a few important pieces into a Starship and bring them back safely. Imagine Unity, which was the first US module to go up in a museum. But they can't bring back anything if a piece of space junk destroys the ISS first. Unfortunately, we just saw a lot more of it entering low Earth orbit as a Russian satellite decided to blow itself into millions of tiny fragments. We still don't know why this satellite broke up and it is unlikely we will hear anything about this from Russia, so for now all we can do is speculate. This breakup is just the latest debris spewing incident with the most impactful ones being anti-satellite tests. 
This is a particularly worrying event as low Earth orbit is getting even more crowded. It is hard not to fear an event like the Kessler syndrome where a cascade of debris causing more debris to form eventually makes low Earth orbit unusable due to space junk. Thankfully this doesn't appear to have happened yet, but it is something to be cautious about. Now let's talk about something more positive again, a NASA mission that had some absolutely incredible success. OSIRIS-REx Security. NASA really wanted that acronym to work. It has been a resounding success for NASA, with the mission gathering samples from the 4.6 billion year old asteroid Benno by booping the surface. The lander's goal was to collect 60 grams of sample from the asteroid. Instead, it collected over 120 grams with the container literally overflowing with regolith. These samples have now been back on Earth for a while, and we are finally discovering what secrets they can reveal about the early solar system. So what did OSIRIS-REx find? One of these secrets has turned out to be truly shocking. Asteroid Bennu may have been part of a world with water. Yep, you heard that right, another Earth-like planet. Researchers at the University of Arizona found significant amounts of magnesium sodium phosphates and other elements and compounds that suggest a watery past for the asteroid. This early watery world that Bennu might have been a part of may have formed near the very start of our solar system. If true, it produced these compounds before violently being torn apart and spreading them across the solar system. And it gets even more remarkable, these found chemicals are also biochemical compounds. So aliens? No, but maybe something that can give us hope of finding some. Someday. These compounds are crucial building blocks for life and finding them on this ancient asteroid from when the solar system was first forming means these chemicals could be all over our solar system. This discovery also takes us one step closer to understanding how Earth became suitable for life. This shows us just how important retrieving samples can be, which is why China is also gathering some lunar samples. Ever since 2007, China has been launching space probes to the moon and four of them have even landed on the lunar surface. Their most recent mission is known as Chang'e 6. On May 3rd, 2024, the probe took off from Earth on a Long March 5 rocket, China's most powerful operational rocket. It took nearly a month to reach the lunar far side, but the probe finally touched down on June 1st. The lander spent two days collecting rock and regolith samples of the surface before launching them back into orbit aboard an ascent vehicle. The ascent occurred on June 3rd before the samples were transferred to a re-entry capsule inside the Chang'e orbiter module while in orbit. The samples were then carried back to Earth before separating and re-entering flawlessly. This was followed by a successful touchdown of the samples in the grasslands of Mongolia. Yep, the capsule is finally back on Earth, bringing the samples back with it. Since then, China has recovered the precious samples and returned them back to the company which built the craft. This is a big achievement for China as it cements them in history as the first nation to retrieve samples from the far side of the moon. That's it for today. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe for more awesome content. This is what fuels the algorithm and it helps us immensely. Check out our epic shirts in your favorite space nerd store. A link is in the description. And if you want to train your space IQ even further, watch this video next to continue your journey. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next episode. So instead of training Mechazilla to fight a giant fire-breathing wi wizard, <laughs> no, fire-breathing wizard, no, is SpaceX planning to build more tower starship segments? Is planning to build SpaceX starship segments tower? Yeah,